Today, we're going to continue our exploration into the world of building AI-powered applications in Java and Spring. Now, one of the things you're going to quickly run into and realize is that there is a need to bring your own data. And why would we need to do that? This is because the LLMs are trained on a specific set of data, and that data runs up to a cutoff point. So at some point, you're going to ask the LLM a question. You're going to prompt the LLM for some specific information. And it's going to come back and either say, I don't know if you tell it that, or it's going to hallucinate and just try to make up some answer. So what I want to explore today is how can we bring our own data and why would you need to do that? Well, again, we talked about the cutoff date, so information not being available. But what if you had your own data that you wanted to bring, like specific product information that is new and not available to the LLM? What if you have documentation that's now up to date and the LLM doesn't have that information? How can we bring our own data? There are some techniques to solve that, and today we're going to take a look at one of them. So I just want to quickly run through a couple things. How to use your own data in AI applications. Now again, AI models have limitations. They're trained with public knowledge up to a certain date, depending on what LLM you're using. They also don't know about your private data, your corporate data, product information, documentation, etc. So how can we solve this? Well, one of the ways that we can do this is we can fine tune the model. Uh, this isn't the easiest thing. It's gotten easier over time, but if we are just developers and we are not in the LLM AI space of uh, being able to train a model, uh, this may be a little bit complicated. So one other thing that we can do is something called stuffing the prompt. We're basically adding our own data to the context so the LLM is aware of it. There are a couple different ways that we can do this. We can just add some text, which we're going to do today. There are also other ways to do this using something called RAG. So we'll look at that in future videos, but this is the idea of bringing our own data to the uh, prompts. There's also something called function calling, so we can have the LLM basically call a function and that could retrieve a specific set of data. So I talked about RAG, uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Uh, this is how to retrieve relevant data for the user input and add it to your prompt. This is more, uh, a little bit more detailed, right? Like we have these huge PDFs of documentation, but we don't want to entirely stuff the context with a thousand page PDF, right? We want to do some kind of similar searches and find the relevant data before we go ahead and send that off to the LLM. Uh, in the previous one, stuffing the prompt, we could just add some kind of context to the prompt. So there are many strategies that when we get into RAG and vector databases, we're going to cover those on this channel, uh, but not today. So let's talk about stuffing the prompt. And I want to take a look at this example today. We're going to code this out, but I just want to talk through it. So I have this prompt. What sports are being included in the 2024 Summer Olympics? Now, this is not something the LLM uh, would actually know about because, again, that training data is up to a certain point. It could try to figure that out based on previous Summer Olympics, right? But that may not be the case. I mean, there might be new sports added. There might be sports that have been removed. So here we have our, our prompt. It says, use the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say, I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to this. Now, we could get a little bit uh, more complex with this prompt and a little bit more specific, saying, like, you are an AI assistant helping uh, with the 2024 Summer Olympics, uh, but this is good enough for now. So we have this context, and then we have a question. The question is the one we just asked. Without any context, the LM is just going to come back and say, I don't know the answer to that because I, I don't have training data on that. But what if we took a list of all the sports that are being made available in the 2024 Summer Olympics and added that as context as we prompted the LM? then it's going to be able to answer that question correctly. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to build this exact example out. And to do that, there's no better place to go than start.spring.io. So let's head over there now. All right, so I'm going to build a Java application using Maven, the latest stable release of Spring Boot 3.2.5. At this time, we're going to say dev.danvega. I'm going to call this stuff. I'm going to use Java 21. Um, I don't think for this example it matters, but we're going to add a couple dependencies here. One is going to be Spring Web, and then the LLM that you want to talk to. In this case, I'm going to use 
OpenAI. I've been using OpenAI for a lot of these examples, but again, Spring AI works with a lot of different LLMs, and we're going to explore that in the future. But just to kind of stick on this uh, pattern that we've been on, I'm going to stay with OpenAI. And that is all we need to get this example up and running. I'm going to go ahead and generate this project. We will go ahead and download the zip. You can open it up in whatever text editor or IDE or most productive in. I'm going to open it up in IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. And with that, let's go ahead and write some code. All right, so here I have my application open. Uh, before we run it, we're going to do a couple things. Uh, first, in application.properties, I have my OpenAI API key in here as an environment variable. So if you're just testing this out, you can just kind of paste this in here. But I advise uh, extracting this to some kind of environment variable so you don't push this up to GitHub uh, with your key exposed. Now, we've done this before in my Spring AI introduction video. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and go back to that one and start there and then come back to this. So that will get us up and running. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. We're going to call this the Olympic Controller. And this is going to be a REST controller. Uh, we are going to go ahead and set a request mapping of slash Olympics. And that should get us off and running. Now, the first thing that we need is a chat client. Again, go back to the Spring AI introduction video if you're not sure what that is. So we're going to say private final chat client. Call it chat client. We'll get that through uh, constructor injection and we should be ready to go. Now, I am going to create a method here. Let's say uh, for a git mapping of slash uh, 2024. We could call this summer, but that is fine. So what I want to get back from this is a string. We'll say git 2024 uh, Olympic, Olympic sports. And this will take a couple of things, but we'll come back to that. So let's say that we are going to need a couple of parameters. The first request parameter will be a message. And this is basically what are we asking of the LLM. And so we'll set a default value here, which is what are uh, what sports are being included in the 2024 Summer Olympics, right? So we could probably ask other questions of this, but um, that's a good start. Uh, we'll assign this to a string and we'll call this the message. And we'll have another request param here. Uh, this will be called, let's see, value is equal to um, stuff it. Uh, this will just be a Boolean, um, whether or not we want to kind of stuff the prompt. So I'm going to say this is false by default, and we'll say Boolean uh, stuff it, right? So that uh, should give us what we want. All right, now we can begin to build this out. So the first thing I need is the prompt template. We saw it in the graphic as we started this uh, tutorial. But I want to externalize this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my resources. And I'm going to create a new directory called prompts. So let's spell that right, Dan. And in this directory, I'm going to create a new prompt called Olympic Sports.st for string template. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this in. This is the same one that we saw earlier. So it says, uh, use the following piece of context to answer the question at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say, I'm sorry, but I don't know. Here's the context. Here's the question. And we're going to fill those in, all right? So now that we have that, we can come back to our controller. And we need to get access to that prompt. So what I'm going to see here is at value. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this from the class path. And this is going to be under prompts and Olympic sports.st, right? We're going to assign this to a resource. So this is a resource in spring. And we're going to say this is the Olympic sports resource, right? OK, so so far, so good. Um, now what we can do here in our method is say uh, we need a new prompt template. And we're going to pass in that Olympic sports resource. 
and we're gonna get a variable back and we'll call this prompt template. Next, I'm going to create a simple map here, which is a uh, has a key of a string and then an object. And we're gonna call this map and we'll just create a new hash map for this. Hash map, right? And that is that. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and put something in this map. Uh, so I'm gonna say map.put. Uh, we're going to assign the question to whatever we get as an argument. So that was assigned to message. And now I have something in there. So what we're going to do with that, we're going to say if stuff it uh, basically is equal to true. Let me go ahead and pull that up a little. And what we're going to say is map.put, as far as the context goes, whatever we get back from the document that we want to include. So in this case, I'm gonna create a new directory in here called docs. So let's say new directory docs. And inside of docs, I'm, let me go ahead and pull this. I have some predefined sports that I pulled off the web. So I'm gonna go ahead and say new file. And this is the Olympic sports txt and in here I'm just going to paste a comma separated list of all the sports that are being included in the 2024 Summer Olympics. Okay so with that I can come back to my controller here and I can say uh, let's get a, access to that resource as well. So I'll say add value and I'll say class path um, and that is in docs olympic sports.txt right? So we can assign this to another resource. So resource, and this will be uh, docs to stuff resource, right? Um, private. Okay, I fixed a little typo here, and that's why that was looking like that. So now we have our docs to stuff resource. So we can pass this in as the context. So now we have some context, and it should know about that answer. But what happens if we don't say stuff it? If not, uh, we are just going to say map.put, and for context, we are going to just say uh, that is an empty string. So now with that in place, we should be able to kind of round this out. Let's go ahead and say uh, prompt template.create. We're gonna pass in that map. So map, uh, let's turn that into a variable called prompt, and what we'll do is we'll call the chat clients.call, uh, pass in our prompt, and from that, uh, we get a chat response, right? So we'll say response. And now with that response, we can go ahead and return something. So let's say return response dot get result dot get output. Nope, not that one, Dan. Get output and get content. So that's basically going to return the string back of the LLM's response. Now, if you missed the last video I did, we did a video on using output parsers to take that response and turn it into something kind of meaningful, an object. There are three output parsers, the list, the map, and the bean output parser. So if you wanna turn this into something a little bit more than just a string, go ahead and check out that video. But for this, this should work well. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and run this. So we have a REST controller that maps to slash Olympics slash 2024, right? Um, and so we should be able to go ahead and open up a terminal here. I'm going to use uh, HTTP IE. This is a nice little program. If you're using uh, curl, this is a little bit easier to kind of read, but you can easily use curl here or some other program like Postman to go ahead and test this out. So I'm gonna go to slash Olympics slash 2024 and I'm not going to say stuff it. Uh, we are just gonna pass this in, and the very first response should be, I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to that because we haven't provided it context. So now what we wanna do is we wanna pass in uh, stuff it equals true. So let's say um, 8080 slash Olympics slash 2024, and we're going to say stuff it equals uh, true. And if we pass that in as a request parameter, now it should go ahead and add that context, send it off to the LM, and then come back and say, here are the, here are the 2024 Summer Olympic sports. And it does. 
Uh, so that was really cool. Just a really good example of being able to provide some context to the LLM on something it may not know the answer to. All right, so that was a lot of fun. We started our exploration into being able to bring your own data to your AI-powered applications. Spring AI makes this really easy to do. Uh, go ahead and add some context to it. Uh, we saw a good example of that today. At the beginning of this tutorial, I talked to you about some different methods to do this. One of which is stuffing the prompt, which we did here today. Another is RAG. This is a little bit more detailed. We're gonna get into this in uh, the next few videos. Uh, I have some exciting examples to share with you on that. And another is function calling, and we'll see if we can't whip up some examples for that as well. So if you are working in AI using these uh, LLMs like OpenAI, and you need to augment it with some data, whether it's just something simple like this or a little bit more detailed where you're kind of bringing your own documentation or product information, there are answers to do this. And again, Spring AI makes this really easy. So hey, uh, if you found this useful, friends, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.